So um, you all have to listen to me now. My name is Dr. Henriksen, Rick Henriksen. I am a, on faculty at the University of Utah. I teach medical students for my full-time job, and then I see patients on the side. Um, I, so I, so I'm in the clinic only about three half days a week, and the rest of the time I teach uh, third and fourth year medical students. And so I um, usually force my students to be a little interactive when I teach, so be prepared. If you don't want to be interacted upon, you're feel free to go to the bathroom right now or some, <laughs> something else. So, um, so I would just, so part of this interaction, so Charlie, I'm going to be terrible for you with the video. I'm going to be all over the place, but we'll just do our best here. So um, raise your hand if, uh, if you feel like it's an important, if it, you feel it's important to teach medical students about nutrition. Okay. Raise your hand if you feel it's important to teach medical students about evolutionary medicine. Okay. Raise your hand if you've had a student learner in your clinic or office in the last year. Okay, all right. So um, thank you for those who've been teaching. Um, those who are not currently teaching medical students or residents, you have lots of opportunity because I can guarantee that there is a medical student or resident who would love to be in your clinic and then there is a medical school or a DO school or MD that's somewhere nearby that you could reach out to. And I'll tell you what, as a third year family medicine clerkship director, if someone rang me up and said, hey, I would love to start taking students in my clinic, I would be very happy about that. Um, so there are lots of opportunities to, to reach out and, and to work to, to do that. We also have medical students um, within our own group who um, are looking for fourth year electives, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what I would like to do is to give you just a small tool that you can use um, to help your teaching. And this, was a, this is a tool that was developed um, that was developed first by family physicians in clinical outpatient in the office setting, but can be used and has been exported to many different settings. And, um, and I think, honestly, it can be used outside of clinical medicine also. It can be, outside, it can be used outside of medicine. And I think it's a really good way of, 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 um, of a teaching style that really helps the learner um, get into the process. But it also doesn't take very much time. As you can see from the title, the one minute preceptor, it's supposed to be very short. Has anybody done a one minute preceptor teaching or training? Okay, oh, Jeff has something. All right, so um, we're, we're gonna go through this. Because um, I know that not everyone likes to role play, I will be playing two roles um, during the role play here. But don't worry, you guys will get a chance to do some role playing a little bit later. So. All right, so first thing that you do in the one minute preceptor is you get a commitment. So um, what I'm going to do now is kind of go through a role play. I'm gonna, the setting that I'm giving is I'm going to be a family physician in an outpatient setting, which I am, um, and I'm going to be teaching a medical student who, had who has just seen a patient. So the medical student has, okay, so the medical student um, has just uh, presented, you know, Dr. Henriksen, this is a patient that stubbed his toe last week and it hurts really bad and when I examined it, it looked stubbed and so for the stubbed <laughs> toe, I want him to um, buddy tape it and, and see how it goes for the next week and if need be, he'll follow up. Okay, so then as, as the physician, I said, well great, thank you very much for that presentation um, and uh, tell, me, uh, tell me what you thought went well in your visit. So this is the getting the commitment part. So making them think about the, what happened and having them come up with something that, that went well or didn't go well. So you can say, how did, how did this go? And um, I, have little, uh, I have little note cards with all the answers on it. So I'm going to pass those out. But you can, write, you can take notes also. OK, so getting the commitment means what, have the person, the student, think about what happened and then Say it out loud. That's what I mean by get into commitment. So tell me how that went. Or you could even do, okay, you just presented that patient. How did you do in, in the presentation of that patient? The student then has to say, well, you know, I did a really good job by being succinct 
um, I used medical language, and I thought it flowed well. So that is a commitment for them. The first step is getting them to think about what happened, okay? The second step, probing for supporting evidence. So what I say in this part is I say, you know, as the, as the faculty, or I say, you know, you said that the, you said that the toe looked stubbed. Um, can you tell me what, what that looked like? So I'm probing this patient or the student to get, to bring up more of the information they are confirming. So they say, well, it was black and blue and, and, it, and it really, you know, really looked like it was injured. It was swollen and that, that's what it looked like. Okay, so then. So then I say, okay, so, um, all right, so that was probing, so I'm getting more inf information, so then reinforcing what was done well. So I, as a preceptor, say, yes, you did a very good job, that, that is correct. A black and blue toe usually means it was stubbed. I think you found that very well in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the visit. Okay, so I'm reinforcing that part that was done well. You can pick one or two things. You don't want to pick too much or else it's no longer a one minute preceptor. And then, so then as a student, you're like, okay, yeah, I did really great. Okay, but this is the time where I can say, you know, in your presentation, you just relayed the fact that you thought it looked stubbed. In the future, one of the errors, think, one things that you could do is say what actually you found on the exam. So rather than saying, you know, I thought it looked stubbed, you could say it was black and blue and swollen. And that would help me, you know, hearing what you're saying so that I can understand exactly what's going on. And then, this is the part where you get to teach a general principle. So you can pick anything that you would like, that, but basically something that regards to the commitment. So um, in this case, you could say, you know, it is very important to be succinct you know, in your presentations, but make sure you include all of the important details. Okay, so that's some, a general type principle that they can think in their mind that will stick for future use. In general, when you're presenting, you want to make sure you start with the subjective and end with your assessment plan, okay, period. Um, just so it's a very short catchphrase of something they can, they can pick up. And then the last is you can, you can, if you need to, this is something you don't have to do, but you can pull a conclusion in with some of the things that you've been talking about. So this, in reality, should not take more than a minute or two to go through this whole process. All right, now is the interaction part. Everyone pair up with someone they're not related to. <laughs> or that they haven't known for many years. Okay. They have not known. So pick a new person or someone they're not related to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is first I would like you to introduce yourselves, just get to know each other a little bit more, which hopefully you're doing. Then pick one person to be the medical student. The medical student needs the story, the case, okay? The medical student needs the case. Preceptor, you're actually, you're doing the hard part right here. So you have, you're gonna go through and do the commitments. So the, the student, read the case, present the case to your preceptor, okay? And the preceptor is gonna do one minute preceptor back to you. Okay, please, let me have you back. <laughs> So, so Jasmine, tell me how you felt you did in this. Well, it was a little bit tricky because he wasn't quite sure what he was reading. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was very sure what I was reading. All right. <laughs> so, okay. That's what febrile meant. I knew we had a problem. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. So, so I had. So clearly the case, I probably, okay, all right. But she, but she knew what I meant. She knew what she was And I happy. knew what the problem with the patient was. Oh, okay, all right. So that is not the point that I actually care about too much. Um, tell us how it felt giving, doing the feedback. Tell me your experience of giving that feedback. It's different. You know, I, I regularly teach third year medical students. They rotate through my office. So it, it's a little bit different than I'm used to doing. Um, so I'm finding it sort of difficult to sort of shift gears from what I would normally do. Okay. But I, I can see where this, you know, where this might be helpful. So what, what parts do you think would be most helpful in this situ in, in this setting? Um, the, the, 
the, the working with the student themselves to, to give their kind of input. That's the part I don't do as much, you know, the, the commitment and the reinforcing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. So one of the things that I saw that was done well in, in, in what you guys were doing was, was really thinking about how to give that feedback you know, succinctly, and, and that was working really well. One thing that, that I've seen um, on some of the errors is not, not even knowing where to start, and you start too, too broadly. And, and that is one of the bigger problems in this, in this teaching, is you start too broadly. So the general principle is pick something small that you want to teach, and, I, and, and stick with that small principle. Okay, so I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I just did, went through the one minute preceptor as I was teaching you guys. Okay, so what does it mean, what does it mean to get a commitment? How, what is, Brian, how, what is that first part? Do you, can you help Bob out or should I explain it again? Uh, it seemed like what it meant to me was you're basically having them commit to telling you how they thought something went. Exactly. So the commitment is really them verbalizing of what they thought their performance was. So it's not, I'm not committing them to doing something. I'm, it's a commit of how did I feel things went. So it, you could phrase it, you know, a, a person, you're, you're hacking them to, to like, you know, reflect and come out with that out loud. And what I realized is, you know, the first thing I asked her was, how do you think she did with the patient? But as soon as I was out of my mouth, I realized that what I really wanted to teach a general principle about was her presentation. Okay. So you have to, I think you have to pick the commitment in accordance yes. with, you have to know where you're going to start. Yes, absolutely. And that's where you're, where oftentimes we're too broad, and then it's like, I don't know, like I did pretty good. Because you asked a broad commitment, so you have to really, you try to say, tell me about your examination of the ankle. What went well in that part? Well, I, you know, I don't really know, you know, the student then says, I don't really know how to examine the ankle very well, and so I just didn't know what to do. Boom, you know exactly then what, how to teach a general principle, and you know where to go from there. But trying to keep it simple, right? Because you don't have, it's a, you got to get in and out, because you don't have time when you got the next patient waiting for you. So you can get in with these small, small snippets of, of teaching. Okay, please swap places and, um, and do it again. This time you're just going to make up your own case. Jasmine, this will be awesome. Good luck. Okay, doctor, doctor over here. So the, what, okay, so think, don't worry about the commitment. It's, it, um, it's bad phraseology, I guess. Um, but what you're trying to do is just get them to think about one specific thing that happened and then ver uh, vo ver uh, vocalize that. So they have to think about what happened and say how they felt that they did. So we just have a, a, just a few minutes to talk about this. What, how did that, that next session go? I'm not going to do the one minute preceptor now, but how did the next, how did it go for you guys? Okay, let's, let's hear from this, uh, this couple up here in the front. Okay, so we got, we had doctor, the good doctor back here doing a good job. Let's, let's now hear from uh, our ladies up here. Yeah, eat and eat, it's good. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have a terrible Okay. What parts were the easiest for you to do? Knowing instantly it was a drug seeker, but apart from that. Yeah, no, besides the medical part, just besides the the, part. the the teaching part. What is Oh, I, uh, gosh. The teaching part. Well, you know, she was a she was um, she was a good medical student. Okay. And um, she made it I, very easy for me to to kind of guide her along and, and ask 
she was she was healed. Cool. And what was nice for me was that she, you know, if I had been truly in a situation, she was very kind about pointing out the errors. She was like, it's great to have a conversation. And, and it sounds like my chemo, but sometimes things that look painful really aren't. Okay. <laughs> you know, so very, very clear. That was a very clear general principle. Things that, things that look painful sometimes aren't very painful, period. So that patient or the student can walk away with their mind with a little buzz phrase. Things that look painful are not, not always painful. And so then they have that. And for, I'm telling you, these little general principles can stick with you. Um, Brian and I were talking yesterday about his PowerPoint presentation, his slides. And, we, and I actually had an opportunity. And I gave him a little general principle. And, we, and, it, and it was like, do you remember what we were talking about? Just how many, you know, points were, were yeah. made in a slide. And that was, I, I gave him the general principle, and it was just like, you know, how many points, boom. And it was something that he already knew, right? But it was just me reinforcing. And rather than beating around the bush and talking about this and talking about that, sometimes it's very nice to just give this very succinct general principle and, and call it. Because you can't, you can't be teaching too many things. So um, any other, anybody else want to share? Jeffrey is always smiling so big. Tell us, tell us how you felt. Well, let, let Mike uh, start. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, another thing that made, uh, this made me realize is how, uh, as a practicing physician, how much stuff you absorb and, and internalize. And when you try to present it, it's, it's difficult to do because you just you know this stuff. And I remember back being a medical student, and you didn't know this stuff. You would just come up with like, every diverse thing that you could think of when you presented a patient to one of your attendings, and then the guy or gal would ask a couple of probing questions, and then had the diagnosis, and you say, God, these people are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that you've been in practice for a while and had some experience, you can do that too. But once you've done that, it's difficult to, to kind of give somebody a history because you already know what's going on. Yeah. So, Deconstructing yeah. what's happening. <laughs> so the wise, the wise preceptor, there you go. working with the student, focused in on, um, you know, a patient with car, uh, chest discomfort, and we talked about uh, whether they have to do a full cardiac workup on somebody that walks into the office with chest discomfort. Okay. Great. So. Thank you very much for your time. Think about using this. Um, when you're teaching, teach one thing at a time and then stop. <laughs>